This video is sponsored by Galefoss 9 and their Tenfold Dungeon Terrain. Kill Team is a great way to delve into the peripheral side of Warhammer 40,000, whether that be Inquisitorial Warbands, Rogue Traders, Eldari Pirates, Beastmen, or ad hoc collections of Space Marines. However, for me, it allows me to scratch those hobby itches for things I might not have time to do, whether that be from a cool piece of art or some really cool warband or character full unit from a Black Library novel. Now, in regards to kit bashing and painting the kill team that's featured in this video, it's based off a piece of art that I saw once when Louise was showing me the Here We Go supplement from back in the day. And there's a really cool piece of vignette art of the Blood Axes. And I always looked at that and I always thought, I've painted enough orcs in my life that I don't really want to do a whole army of them. I've got my issues with orcs. We all know this. I've talked about this at length on many, many things, like chat shows or even on this particular style of video. However, seeing the blood axes in this vignette I've, it's stuck with me for quite some time and then pat was like we need to do a kill team i was like cool let's do a kill team let's do the blood axe kill team let's kit bash it and try and make it look like this piece of art so i'm very excited about giving this a go and seeing what we can do so first up is to actually build and kit bash the blood axe warband now there's a couple of things i really like about this warband there is a human advisor which is insane and i like the idea of this there's an ogryn uh, which again working for orcs feels weird but also I really like the back banners as well, that kind of sashimono feel that you see with the orcs and it's very retro, very classic. So I do like that. So they're gonna be things I'm really gonna look forward to doing in this video. So we're gonna just crack open a load of bits and then get started making this kill team. First up is to build the knob, then add bits to make him look kind of like the art. So for this, I'm just gonna build it straight from the set. As you can see, we've got an orc boy set and we're just building the knob as is. Now I want a peak cap for my knob However, I've also got this plastic commissar set who has a giant peak cap on it. So I will be using this set, but not with a peak cap. So what I'm gonna do is nick that for my knob. So what I'm gonna do is cut that out. Now, when I was cutting this out, it was dead easy just to assemble the two bits with the commissar's head. However, when I was trying to cut it off on screen, it kind of got a bit weird and mushed up. So I had to take it away from screen and then do it quite gingerly with a knife off screen. So I do apologize for that you won't see that being happen because I nearly ruined it. And I've only got the one. So they're not built. It made sense to build his human advisor. Again, I'm just building this guy as is. The only difference is I'll be using a different head. Now I have lots of gene stealer cultist stuff at home. However, searching through my bits, I found one of the riders from the Atalan Jackals that looked almost perfect as a match to the one in the art. So I'll be using him. Now it's not a perfect fit as you can see. So some clipping and trimming is required to make it fit file and cut it to fit don't forget to file down that cranial ridge too because i almost forgot that so don't end up having a weird jeans to the cool look to it next up was to build the ogryn now i had a couple of options here option one was to build the necromunda slave ogryn with a power fist and spudjacker pretty much as it is in the instructions however i quite like the idea of giving him a big gun now i didn't have any astromilitarum ogryns i only had spare bits on those but however with a little bit of a kit bashing with some of those parts and the slave ogryn I decided to go with that option and give him a frag cannon or frag launcher, whatever it is, instead of the power fist. And the other thing as well is it felt more right and unique to that look. So it didn't just look like a repainted slave. Next up was to build some orcs. I'm just gonna assemble them as they are. I only need a few for this kill team. I've already got a test model, which counts as number four. So I'm just gonna build three for this and then get them painted up in a bit. Next up is to make the bat banners. Now for the bat banners, I'm gonna be using some paper clips or in some places, if you don't have paper clips, you can also use some brass rod as well. Initially, I started using paper clips, but I found brass rod is actually better because I can cut it to length. I don't have to worry about it just being a limited size, which is unfortunately what you get with paper clips. Now, once you've got your brass rod or your paper clip to the length you want it to, you do need to bend it a little bit to make an L shape. Using brass rod is perfect for this because you can have excess. So you, you don't have to worry about, you know, there being not enough length on the height or on the vertical or on the horizontal or whatever. So using brass rod means you can make it a little bit more proud and then trim it down once you get all your tape on there. Next up is to tear a length of tape and stick it to a cutting mat. And then all I'm gonna do is just draw out one little corner. These tabs, so the verticals and the horizontals are just gonna fold around onto that brass rod or that paper clip and it kind of gives that sense of like rough stitching so all i do is just cut out a little corner and then flip the tape round so the sticky bits now facing upwards get my little upside down l place that on the top and then just fold those tabs over if you can roll them under using a knife or i don't know like a file or something like that something pointy that actually helps to it 
just to adhere underneath. Um, doesn't matter if you can't, it's not the end of the world. You can always drop a bit of super glue in there as well. But don't worry, it does feel tacky and sticky right now. But once you spray it, that'll all be gone. So do not worry about that. And like I say, it does look rudimentary, but it's very orky and that's what matters. Then after that, once I've got a few of these back banners made, I'm just going to drill the hole into the backs of my orcs. Now some, it's perfect because they have these little round sort of like armor plates on the back, so you can just drill behind that. With the orc boss, he didn't have that. He just had like his big sort of holster with a gun in it. So again, talking about the dilemma earlier about do I cut off that boss pole or don't I? So I just thought I'd just stick it to the side. Um, the last thing you want to do is just looks like they've had a hole in the back and they've been impaled by it. It doesn't look right. So if you can hide it behind something, it looks better. Tenfold Dungeon is modular RPG terrain that is designed to make your games nights easier and quicker than ever before. Skip the prep, making setting up and breaking down your terrain achievable in just a couple of minutes. Everything packs a weight into the box so storage is easy and taking it to a friend's house for gaming is easier than ever before. They even fit into a motorcycle top box. The new wave of Tenfold Dungeon sets include four new sci-fi settings to add to the previous four fantasy releases. The sci-fi dungeons aren't just for RPGs, they're perfect for games like Kill Team, Necromunda, Infinity and Star Wars Legion. You can even use it for AOS or 40k as you can get a good table of terrain. I use it for Warcry loads and it's great fun and quite violent. The dungeons are made to last with durable cardstock designed for use after use. So click the link in the description to skip the prep of your games night and get yourself some tenfold dungeon terrain. So I've got the kill team built up. There's about six figures plus the seventh, which was the test model. Now, one thing I, I am going to try and do is try and keep the paints to a minimum. So there's going to be like a red, a blue, a green, a yellow, and then there'll be a little bit of mixing here and there. But we're going to start off first by just getting up to like a tabletop standard, and then we'll add some extra steps later on. But first of all, let's get on with those base coats. So I started off with a Zandri Dust undercoat. I mean, if you don't have Zandri Dust, you can just do grey, whichever works for you. And I've used Golden Olive as a base coat. So again, you can be really untidy here. Just get that all slapped in um, because you can always obviously build up those layers with paint. That's the great thing about paint. You can coat over it. It's great. So just do a couple of coats of Golden Olive. Once you've done that, I'm then going to get some sponge into one of the little brush sleeves. Thank you, Darren Latham, for showing this great technique. Uh, and then I'm just going to just sponge on some lighter green, which is going to be lime green. I'm just going to sponge that on. Now here I've used two greens because I wanted to have like a little bit of definition for the orc skin. But you could always just add a bit of yellow to your golden olive if you really wanted to. So just sponge that on. Now there's two things this is going to do. It's going to give it a bit of a, a layered highlight, but it's also what I want is a nice sort of leathery skin texture, which is very reminiscent of orc skin. So it's got a bit of texture to it. Next is to pick out the yellow trousers. And for this, I'm using Sahara Yellow. Again, even though I've got Zandri Dust as an undercoat, I'm just gonna do a couple of thin coats just so I don't clog up the detail and it's not too streaky. And it's picking out any red details, mostly the red top. Um, so I'm just gonna get some blood red for that. And again, a couple of coats of that as well. Now for the black details, I'm gonna use Black Legion. I'll thin it down a little bit and I'm gonna do this over anything I want black, but also anything that I want metallic as well, because it's just gonna go in the cracks and I don't have to be as, fastidious when I'm doing like the silver details or the gold details because there's all black in the crack so I don't have to worry about it. So if you want to, don't have to do this option for the metallics but it's recommended. Then I'm going to pick out the blue back banner uh, using ultramarine and also the camo pattern as well. Again a couple of coats on the back banner and the camo pattern you could probably do a coat and then in some places a little bit here and there as a second coat but not you don't have to go mad with the camo. Any silver details I'll be using oily steel. Again because I've got all that black over there, I don't have to be as neat. I can just like go over the raised areas and it's all black in the recesses. So it kind of saves you a bit of effort. I'm going to use grimy grey now. I'm going to use this for any bone and teeth as well as any fingernails because they've got quite sharp little fingernails, these dudes have. And I'll be using old gold for any gold details. There's not going to be a lot of that, mostly on like the human advisor. I had, there was a couple of gold details, but I've got the cat badge for the boss and also his big belt buckle with a fist on it. Then it's my favourite part getting some black knight, thinning it down a bit, and then just drenching it over the model. Now this is a really good wash or shade from AK because it's quite viscous as well. So it does take its time to dry, but it gives a bit of a blend. You can thin it down a bit more where the skin is so you can have it a bit lighter, but it gives you a nice transition and I really like the effect of it. 
So our models are now tabletop ready. They've been base coated and shaded, so you could just base them and play games with them until the end of time and not worry about any adding any details. That's entirely up to you. What I'm now gonna do is move on to some extra steps. So this is gonna be doing some tidying up, so that's just relaying those base coats and then doing some highlighting. If you wanted to add a bit more punch to the whole kill team or just the commander, it's entirely up to you. So the first part of our next step is just to tidy up those base coats. So that's just tying up a bit of the skin, tying up a bit of the yellow, tying up a bit of the, going over the black a couple of times if you think it needs a bit more depth. Also re up the blue. So you're literally just going around, tying up those base coats. And what this is doing is it's giving you an extra layer of tone, even though you've just used two paints, you used a paint and a shade using that same base coat paint again to give you almost a third transition if you like. I'm also going to add some of those coloured sections like the yellows or the reds onto any bare metal areas just to look a little bit more like painted metal that's chipped up on the edges. So I'm not going to go all the way to the edge uh, and then what that does is it saves you from highlighting it and it kind of looks highlighted but also chipped at the same time. So I've done this on the boss with some yellow bits on his fist and obviously some red on his shoulder pads as well. But you can do whatever colours you want to, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to mix in a little red to the green. Now, normally when you mix red and green together, it kind of gives you a bit of a muddy brown effect. But if you use more red, it's kind of giving you more of an earthy pinky red. And I'm just going to use this for the tongue and lips. I'll do this on all the dudes, but obviously we're just painting the uh, the boss at the moment. So just get that tongue painted. And also I'm going to pick out the knuckles as well, because it looks like he's been punching grots. Loads of grots. Or maybe some orcs as well. Then I'm going to highlight the skin with lime green. Again, just picking out those raised areas. Take your time, work your way around. In some places you might want to layer, some places you might want to do an edge highlight, mainly around the face because it's very characterful. After we've highlighted our skin, we're now going to move on to highlighting the red. You can also use this for the eyes as well. So you're just going to get some burn red and we're just going to pick out some edge highlights on all those red details. Again, you don't have to go too mad, just picking out some raised areas here and there. Now some colours, I don't have any light greys or light yellows. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use grimy grey and I'm going to mix that into the yellow first. So it's going to give me more of a pale yellow so I can highlight any yellow areas. So I'll do that first. And then once I've done that, I'm then going to get some grimy grey and add that into the black, which will give me a bit of a mid-tone grey. Again, it doesn't have to be precise. You've got a kill team of like seven figures. If you're using a wet palette, that should probably stay wet enough for all of them. Or it doesn't matter if it's slightly different between character and character. So it's fine. Just mix in 50-50 of each and you should get a nice mid-grey. I'm just going to go around and then just do some edge highlights over his jacket and make it look a bit torn and battered. For our Humi advisor, what we're going to do here, most of them have been painted following the rest of the guide. So all we're going to do is give them a little camo pattern as you see on the art, which is some little yellow squares with like what is supposed to be a smaller red square in the middle, but I'm just going to do a red dot. So all I'm going to do is make a little pattern of yellow squares along his trousers. And then once that's done, neat up with a bit of blue, just in case I've gone a bit wibbly wobbly with some of the lines. And then just put some red dots in it. And then I've got myself some really garish human camo with this poor advisor. What is he doing? Some weird life choices this guy made. Don't know what he's doing. Now for our orc skin, we're just going to use the same way I've done the human skin and that is using cork. A couple of base coats of that. So take your time, build up a couple of layers. Get some of that black knight like I've used across everything else. Thin it down, coat that over. If you don't want to do this, you can always opt for some different shades. I'm just using black knight because that's the shade I've used in this video. So just coat that all over. Again, thin it down a bit and then tidy back up with some cork on those raised areas. And then again, get some grimy gray, mix that into your flesh, and then you've got yourself a nice highlight as well. And then you can progressively mix grimy gray into that flesh tone to make it lighter and lighter and lighter if you want to do more and more highlights on there as well. Don't go too mad though. You don't want it to be too sort of bony on the corners, it's up to you. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it though. So I've got our models base coated, washed and highlighted. They're ready for the tabletop. But the next step that I want to do is add some love to those back banners. And I'm just going to get a load of glyphs cut out, a load of like blood axe decals, put them onto some tissue, douse that in water so it's nice and soggy that tissue is. So it's just going to help those decals lift off the backing paper. And then get some hard coat whilst that's happening onto the actual back banners. That'll make it easier to apply these. You can maneuver them around. They're not going to get like stuck on the coarseness of that um, masking tape texture. So once you've got some hard coat on there, let it dry. And then it's just a matter of placing down your decals where you want them to. There's no right or wrong way. I'm kind of using the art as a guide. So I'm doing like a nice glyph of the blood axes. Then underneath it, do lots of little orky glyphs, sometimes in square patterns, sometimes in columns. It doesn't really matter. It's entirely up to you. For the orc knob as well, I'm also going to do it on his jacket because he has some glyphs on his jacket around the sides and I thought that looks quite cool. I'll just add that to his jacket as well. 
So just work your way around. And again, that's a glosses jacket, just so it made it easier. So once you've done that across every single character in your kill team, whether that be the human advisor, I don't think I did anything to him anyway, but the Ogwin I definitely did. Um, once that's all done, we're then gonna get some of that Black Knight, thin it down, because it's super matte, and then just paint over everything. Most of those back banners, but also anywhere else you might have put a decal. And then that's gonna do two things. It's gonna matte it down so there's no shiny film showing through. And also, it's gonna make it look a bit dirty, which is kind of what you want. And as it dries and pulls down to the back banner, it kind of looks like it's a bit scorched and burnt and battle-worn as well. So you're getting quite a few effects just from one little wash, which is really, really good. And now to finish our orc kill team off, just to make them look a bit more retro, because we've got some bright tones here already. First of all, I'm gonna get some sand. I'm gonna apply some super glue to the base. Use one of the paper clips or brass rod bits you've got, just maneuver it around, and then just submerge that into some sand. I'm just using some Army Painter coarse sand here. So I'm just gonna submerge it into that, let it soak up, move it a couple of times. You need, might need to wipe your finger around the rim a little bit here and there, because you might get some granules of sand on there by accident or some super glue. So now we're gonna move on to painting the bases. And for this, I'm gonna start off with Golden Olive, because it is gonna give you that retro Goblin Green vibe. It's not an exact replication of Goblin Green, but it's close, it gives you the look. So I'm gonna thin that down first of all. Because I'm using water to thin this down, sand is quite good at soaking up water, even though I've had some super glue there. So that's gonna soak and make it easy to apply. So I'm gonna do a couple of coats of that over the top. And then of course, a few coats around the edges to rim that base as well. And just build up that Goblin Green or Golden Olive effect. And of course, classic style workshop Goblin Green bases used to be dry brushed with Sunburst Yellow. Um, we don't have that. We're just gonna use that Saharan Yellow. We're just gonna do a nice little dry brush over that texture. And again, to give it that nice yellowy highlight that's reminiscent of Goblin Green bases. There we are, our Blood Axe kill team is now done. They've got Goblin Green bases, which just gives them a nice retro classic look. And honestly, I actually really enjoyed doing this. I, I normally avoid painting orcs, mainly because I've painted so much for GW over the years and I hate painting green skin, but I really enjoyed this. I think adding that retro sort of vibe to it, as well as going like just cool kit bashes, getting some humans. And like I said before, I really like that piece of art and getting that opportunity to turn that into a kill team. It's It's been a really fun project. In hindsight, I might have done a few things a bit differently, may have punched the green out a bit lighter because it kind of clashes with the Goblin Green bases ever so slightly because I've used the same color as the base coat. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done all the decals before shading the entire models just to cut down on like drying time. Um, but I'm happy enough with the kit bashes. I really like the final look and just sticking loads of glyphs on just looks really, really cool. So if you've got any ideas or things that you want to do and you think, oh, it's going to be quite hard to kit bash that, don't, don't let that stop you. Just, you know, be inspired by it. It doesn't have to be an exact replication. This isn't exact to the art. It's inspired by the art. Um, and I'm still getting the beats and the hits from it because the colour scheme's similar, the camo's similar, the bat banners are similar. So I'm still getting that nice nostalgic hit of seeing that art in this kill team. So you don't have to make it like verbatim. You can always just get the, the nuance and the inspiration of it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've had a lot of fun doing the kit bashing and the painting. I was surprised actually. I was thinking, oh, this is going to be quite garish. I'm not used to that, but I actually really enjoyed it. So hopefully there's things in this video that you've made use of um, or things that you might think about differently the next time you do a kill team or whatever. But, you know, don't let anything stop you. Do what you want. Have fun doing it. And that's the key. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Massive thank you to our patrons because they are awesome human beings. Really appreciate the support um, just to do mad stuff like this. Um, so thank you very much. And of course, thank you to Gale Force 9 for sponsoring this video as well. It's been a lot of fun, been a bit of a blast. And yeah, can't wait to use these guys in game.